back at it again. <laughs> Everyone's been asking for it. It's time, ladies and gentlemen. We've got Puppet Control. We're just fresh off a regional. We're on like hour 16 after being up at like half three. Yeah. Uh, I did not wake up to play on this Digimon, and I'm coming back not playing on this Digimon. We're coming back with some good results at the very least. We came 33rd out of 175 people at Glasgow Regionals, best of one event, big format guys. Um, and then the 3v3 side event we did, we we said we were going to drop after going X2, decided to clutch up instead. Very fucking amazing. Uh, let's just get straight into the build. I've kind of separated it a little bit differently because I don't there's so many different pieces to this. Uh, I'm just gonna go through like the, the, the generic draw and I'm just gonna move these out of the way actually. So we've got like the four Coromon, uh, best red egg I've ever printed, and then the fifth Gigimon egg, which lets you sort of deal with early like DP uh, searches or checkers and stuff like that. And like floodgates as floodgates, well. Floodgates essentially, yeah. Um, ultimately, it's just a fifth egg for. The best rookie they've ever printed in Ukomon. Uh, the government mandated amount, and then free Muchomon. Um, question for y'all why did Jake cross the road? To check a security. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna like go into the. If, you, if you're a red or like a blue hybrid player, you've seen this draw engine before. Mucho draws your cards, Uko draws your cards. This is still like, the ridiculous Ukomon if you find it. Pretty straightforward stuff. Yeah, it's crazy they turned promo Gilmon into an uncommon. Yeah, uh, much better for people who are on a budget, like myself. Uh, and then we get to, we're going to get to the actual crux of the combo. So this is the engine, the puppet engine. So we were on three system on Blanc VT6, uh, four VT, uh, starter deck system on Blanc, uh, four Blanc Awakened. Uh, I'm going to get some space, I'll just move some stuff up here. Uh, four of the EX7 Arisa. Uh, great all art, by the way. But the reason we have all art is because if it's, this was the regular art, I could not tell the difference between these two artworks. Uh, Arisa has one pose and it's just her doing three fingers like this. But she owns it, so good for her. And then finally, uh, four of the Wonder Stomp. So, a general idea behind the combination of is this you like cycle cards with your, you know, your draw engine, you find your cards you need, and then you set up this and this tamer, at least one of each, ideally. Because uh, this one's the mem setter, and this one prints you a memory, uh, like AG does if your opponent has a Digimon starter main. Um, the Iris, this one, Iris, here, lets you give a rush, a uh, puppet rush if you play it by effect, and this one lets you float into a puppet if one dies, but they have to be level 3 specifically. Um, so we use, uh, usually if you use like the Schumann, because they're puppets, um, but we, what we do instead is we play System on Blanc, which are level 3 and specifically puppets, and we also use Blanc Awaken, which is also a level 3 puppet. And the idea is these ones also draw you cards, but you fire these in, and then if they die to security, you suspend Arisa to play the Blanc Awakened, uh, and then the Blanc Awaken picks up either a Blanc from hand or trash, loads it underneath, and recovers you all. And then you give that one brush, and then you swing that one in. And then if it dies, you more or less get the one you put on the back to hand. So you create this kind of uh, loop where you keep generating tamers on the board uh, and you just sort of keep chipping your opponent away damage. In the meantime, you're also recovering with System on Blanc Awaken, so it's sort of like the, the kill clock's going from there's a decreasing, yours is increasing. So it creates like really, uh, really interesting defensive lines where you're still trying to kill your opponent, but in the meantime, you're creating like a really uh, a stack security. And there's not like there's like not too many uh, control pieces in the deck. Mostly, you kind of want Tamer to be hit out of security, but like there's some control pieces which I'll go into a bit a bit later. But the general idea is you're not relying on security to bail you out of situations. You're using it as a way to like I don't want to die, so I'm just going to recover. And this lethal line that you have before now doesn't kill me, and I get to play another turn next turn. There will be some instances where you just don't have a puppet on board or you're playing a deck that bounces puppets or level freeze, uh, which is where Wonderstomp comes in. Wonderstomp is one of the best cards in this deck. It is a two cost option which lets you draw one, and then play a level 3 puppet for free. So this five cost system on Blanc Awakened now only costs two and recovers one. So it's like a, like a really unfair holy way that also 
deals the damage to your opponent. And it you know, doesn't have to be for uh, Blank Awakening as well, it could be draw one, play this, pitch one, draw two. So you're sort of like generating an easy cycle that way. Uh, and then obviously, because it's played by effect, you give it rush, then you swing it in, then it dies, then you play out another body, then you recover one from the Blank Awakening. That's the kind of loop you're sort of generating with these tapers. And the more of them that you have out, the better, because then you can just like swing, give rush, uh, swing, play another one, give rush, and then you're sort of doing like two to three damage per turn in some cases. Um, uh, too much, too many cards. <laughs> so that's like the, that's the perfect engine. So what are we actually recovering, or like how are we not dying to opponents? So, more or less, we're just using like generic control pieces. We're on two defects, uh, two gallant one secret rare, uh, or if Mr. Jamie Conquest is watching this, four defects one. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, I mean, I I don't need to explain these cards unless you've never played the game before. Defects, great for a wide board, um, particularly better into Imperial because DT evolving Pyodramons is better than trying to pop them. Gallant Mon, uh, unironically, like. I do kind of see what Jamie means by this, but like, you can just kind of slash it into control deck because it does, trash does add up, like, because you're swinging in and doing damage, so if your opponent's security is getting a dome, you're pitching one off the, the star, star deck system on Blanc, um, your security is getting dome, so you're recovering one, one does some end up in security, um, uh, your rookies that you swing face with end up in security, so you, your, your trash does end up adding up where you can just sort of drop this for even like five memory. Because as well as that, the RS is a, a printing you memory, so like if you go to four or five, you can drop this for five and then swing, pop another thing, and then I don't know, play another tamer or pass turn in a different way. Good for routing room mode because this deck is very like weak to getting room mode looped. Uh, you can just sort of like they'll pass you to four or five, and then you just drop the count and pop the room mode. Uh, it's how I won like one of my uh, demon lore matches for the into a little bit later. Uh, what else have we got? We've got three Odin Breath, uh, two Lament. Do we have any more options? Of course we do. We're playing Security. One Death Ball, one Sunrise Buster, one Edge Program, two Wyvern's Breath. Um, from worst to best, Sunrise Buster unfortunately didn't end up coming up as much that This was originally a second copy of X Program, and the idea was that sometimes you just kind of get folded to uh, rogue decks like Tyrant. Um, you don't have a way to affect them with the demon first. So X program was that sort of cut, like self destruct button where you just sort of like blow up the board. But also X program blows up your board, so you have a system on the board, and you also have the iris that lets you float. You can blow up the board and then float into uh, an awakened blank, which lets you recover one. So it's kind of unfair in that regard. The problem is uh, there are a lot of because it's the UK. People seem to really like uh, the X antibody decks, so Dex Doru, uh, Fenrir, Levy X, Magnet X, and this just card just doesn't affect them at all. So is I decided to cut it to one. Maybe this could have been something different. Maybe like a Fireball or maybe a third Wyvern. A third Wyvern could have been something. Um, I think I was conscious about it being a third Wyvern because it doesn't catch some decks that go to 16k deep. So things like Imperial. With Pally Ace goes to 16k, where that will be where you need the X program instead. Or, I don't know, Mirage, uh, yeah. Galaxy can pump the damage up a little bit. But in hindsight, the Sunrise was didn't come up nearly as much as it. The only thing it came up against was the Imperial matchup, but I ended up losing that anyway, unfortunately. So, it's one of those things. It was, it was a last minute change. Yeah, uh, in theory, it like gives you the better shrink, and like if you're gonna. Pay play a four, for a four, might like, as well pay five and like clear a rookie or clear a body, right? Uh, Death Claw kind of acts as a, a, a weird fifth understand. The idea is that you pop your system onto potentially pop a level four. Doesn't matter if you don't pop a level four, because the idea is that you pop your own body, trigger Arisa, float into another system on, give it rush and swing the game or something to that effect. Uh, also, like, again, plays lower bodies and gets you out of certain situations. Like maybe your system on is stunned and you need it off the board for the gallant one. You just death for it and get, it, get rid of it. Need Pomimon gone? <laughs> yeah, you know what? This is your guy. Uh, two elements of friendship to bring back the... Mostly to bring back the... Uh, where is she? Like an awakened block. Because she, on the league, will recycle her system on, but she can't recycle herself. 
So the Lament uh, recycles her, but also we can recycle the Gallant Mon, we can recycle the, the Death Egg. Very funny against the, Death Egg, um, the Dex Dora player. They popped my Dex, uh, Death Egg one, and then I think they swung into Lament, and I added the Death Egg one back to the life. Here we go again, guys. Um, but yeah, Lament. I think maybe the Sunrise boss could have been a third copy of Lament, to be honest, because being able to add back your uh, awaken points is very important, but again, okay, last minute change. This is the best card, no, this is the best option in your deck, Odin's Breath. Um, for anyone who doesn't know what it does, it reads, uh, minus 3k to one of your opponents each month, then if there's a total of 6 security or less in, on total for both uh, players, board-wide security tap minus 1. This is what wins you the Imperial matchup, because for all the damage that they do, so just swinging and suspending, the only card in their deck that has security attack plus one is BT12 Dragon Mode. Uh, fighter Mode. Fighter Mode. Um, so if you don't see that or if it comes out of security, this card effectively reads uh, Imperial cannot win for the turn. Like it just saves you for a turn. And it's also good in some matches. So, like, just sometimes you need to be able to go, oh, like you're not sure if your uh, security is enough to sort of get, carry you for the rest of the way. Oh, yeah, they have a lethal line, you just go, all right, here's an old breath. I uh, I will pass you to five, but you can't win this turn, and next turn, I have the abilities like promote, so it's pop off, stuff like that. Um, also, notably, this card triggers when it's burned. So against demon lords, if it happens to pop out security against demon lords, the Ogudemon no longer swings for game, which means if you can out their board, ideally with X program, which in hindsight would have been better at two, because being able to play Algudo and Co. Um, wins you the game at that point, then they they just can't do anything. Like they can ruin Moju, but if you play that ball, what are they doing after that? Because their the gaze are gone. Um, yeah, not much more to say about the card other than just it, it's a great way to stabilize your deck when you feel like kind of behind or just need to stop your opponent down here. And then finally, Tamers, we have oh, okay. four. The purple carry because she's still not limited. And uh, one did you want emperor? Uh, I, 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 I could, there's no real need to explain what the, these carries do. Uh, if you're a set con aficionado, they're a mainstay. I tried ET13 Keenan at one point to try and do over Imperial plays, but there's no substitute for just like taxing people for checking your security. It, it's just a second to none. And that is the deck list. Uh, so, what was my room? Uh, round one. Sorry, mate. You just popped my ears. We're on the train, by the way. I <laughs> haven't got that. Um, my round one was a Demon Lord player. Um, their first. <laughs> their opening, uh, like, when they saw him, that was like, what the fuck am I against? So that, was, that was the exactly the reaction I was looking for all day. Um, they. I feel, I feel I think they didn't really open. No, they kind of did open well. I think I was just very good at taking them off the board when necessary. Uh, they did find Shoto, but the, the problem with like Demon Lords in this deck specifically is that all of their effects are either deletion or effects that like don't do anything to me. Like w w what's the Ozamon Peter evolving? All of my awakened. Like, okay, this I want to actually point this out because this happens so often. Guys, this is a level 3. The amount of times people said, oh yeah, DJ Digivolve this. Uh, DJ Digivolve this. Uh, DJ Digivolve this. Yeah, it's level 3. You can't DJ Digivolve level 3. So, just because it has, it's like, it's basically a glorified ex ante body. Like, you can't DJ Digivolve that. I don't know why that's so hard, but... I, I get it, because it, for some unbeknownst reason, it evolves for 2 over level 3. There were some instances, actually. This is actually kind of stupid. If you're, like, really strict, this is like a side tangent, sorry. If you're... <laughs> Where is, where, where's one of them? Oh, I didn't hit that slide. If you're like really drug struggling for draw cycle, uh, yeah. that is a level three. Oh, that's gross. So, yeah, you can you can just go yeah you over two. <laughs> Not great, <laughs> but if you really get really struggling. I think it was like against the second demon lord player. I think it was uh, exactly uh, Coromon Ukomon. I think it was like, a bad stack. <laughs> just super struggling. Um, but yeah, um, the, the one thing I do feel bad about the, the game one demon lost play is that they made a misplay and they did ask, like, they asked really nicely, like, can I take that back? And it was like understanding if I said no, and I was like, if it was a locals, I'd say yeah, but like, I, I had to, I had to, 
the misplay they made was that they played a Lilith Bond for cards that they were going to evolve into Hukudamon. But instead, what they wanted to do was Rival Thrive back the Lucimon uh, Chaos Chaos Mode, the, the level 5. Yeah, Chaos that, Mode. Yeah, Chaos Mode. Play that instead, then I think evolve into something, maybe like a Creeper Mod or a Lilith Mod, or just something to like chip away at my security or something, or like get them to recover one. Um, but I think. I, I don't think it made a difference at that point. Um, also, good thing to know about the Demon Lords matchup is if you're if you can find Kari's and they play Lucy Monkey Chaos mode, just just take the security burn. You you tax them for that. Like they recover one, but if they lose turn from it, then it's not really great for them. Um, but it's like it's it's kind of lost. Like, obviously, if they find a Gudemon in trash early, you just kind of lose. But yeah, I think it's more of an even matchup for us. Um, that was round one. Round two was against uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Conquest. Uh, poor guy. He he didn't find any level fours. He was like slamming lava lava guys by like turn four or five, and um, no healers either. So it was just uh, just, just doming him for, for damage. Uh, game we we played a second game um, because this is that's the one clown fiesta, and if you brick, you just you just lose them as well. Um, and like he had like a better showing then, but even I still managed to like win out overall. Um, I don't know if that's just Dragon Link's being not great, or uh, maybe maybe Jamie was more still more unlucky than I, I imagined. But either way, um, the Dragon Link's matchup, if they find the Volcanic Dramon, you, you do kind of have to worry about that. But if they find Metallic Dramon, that doesn't do anything because once again, D to do well for what? By level three, good luck, good, good luck, good luck. Uh, game round three was I can't remember because it's been sixteen hours since. Um, give me a, oh, it was against Ancient Guru Month. They didn't find Ancient Guru Month. I just kept doming them for damage. Um, yeah, that game was over really quickly. Um, I found my lines. I found my pieces. Uh, the Ancient Guru matchup, you can kind of. You can kind of stall them again with Odin's Breath because they don't do much damage outside of floating your security. Obviously, if you're like really behind the curve and you just not set up, then the Odin's Breath isn't really going to save you because you just can't sort of establish a board state. But if you manage to like establish an early board state, they're not really lethaling you from nowhere. You can kind of see, all right, this this one team is going to do two damage to me, and then the next time going to do two damage to me. But if you like start like recovering one every now and then. Then their lethal line just kind of gets mess, messed up, and you can kind of win from there. And then you can own his breath in the pinch to sort of like save yourself from getting, I don't know, like Louis or Hammer's March from nowhere. Uh, I'd say it's like a, it's a comfortable ish matchup. Uh, round four was against another Demon Lost player. We unfortunately lost that one. Um, it, it came down to relying on my security being really good because I ended up having like Defex, four Tamers, and six security. Uh, I remember he managed to. Oh, he played the old Chaos Mode, uh, which pops a Tamer or a level 6. So he pops a Tamer first, then swings over a Goodle to pop everything, burn 4. And unfortunately, the first check was Odin's Draft, which didn't uh, inflict the security attack minus. And then it was also X Program that got burned, which would have saved me from like one more damage. Um, so he just like, he altered the board pretty well. I, I can't really fault him for that. Um, but again, it's one of those where if they find a good or early enough, then you just kind of lose. Uh, the next round was also a Demon Lord player, and they hit two rivals Barrage out of security. Um, which is really good, because if they don't have rivals Barrage, they can't ruin mode loop you. And even if they find Shoto, that's a great blocker you've got there, but that's also a blocker that deletes my system on. So I'm going to keep swinging, and you can delete as many bodies as you want. They're all coming back into some way, shape, or form. Uh, round six was against Imperial, which I lost. I was I was on track to win that, but I ended up running out of system on in hand. But I just lost so much tempo, um, and then Imperial just it does Imperial stuff when Dike enters the board. Uh, again, all the breath like stalled enough, and I think I was close to decking them out because they'd also like I'd hit the Pally Ace out of security, and I was banking on them only having one. I think they only did have one security, but I they. I think I, I think I searched an Odin's Breath off of Ukulmon, which was just I, I couldn't I couldn't rely on another one being in security, unfortunately. Uh, 
game, uh, round six was against Mirage Galaxy, which I also lost. That also came close to our uh, deck out. But again, it just had enough damage and resources to be able to. I think I ended up getting double Mirage, and it had to be exactly all these weapons security to save me. And I, again, I think it was. The second one got checked in security, and I searched the third one, so at that point there was just, there was just nothing I could save him for, um, But also, very close game. Um, I think if I managed to find another Rush Tamer, I would have been alright, but it's what it was. Uh, and then, that was round 7, so round 8 was Dektor Rugora, which I ended up managed to win in time. Uh, I played this matchup to death with Harry. Um, for me, the Dektor matchup is un unwinnable, unless they're on purple ways, which Better base, which makes it slightly more doable. As is their best tamer pot? Um, they have less tamer pot. Um, they burn through resources a lot quicker, and they don't have piercing. So you can keep like sending out system ones if they're on Dextoru, They they are forced to collision. So if they can't pop enough of your tamers, which you usually have quite a few of, and if they're popping the wrong tamers, like if they're popping the carriers, which you don't particularly care about. Then they're forced to collide with your system one. So if your, your system one is forced to block, they die. You fall into another one, and if they unspend, all they're forced to swing again. So, so it, it was like a few situations where I just kept sort of spamming system ones out. And when he, he unfortunately when he did hit security, it was a one and stuff. So I was like, I'd rather one play another one out, and he had to collide on that. Uh, it also helps that he searched two Dextoru Gora off off of a um, Tyranomon. But didn't take it, he took something else. So, two, uh, like turn one, they got bot decks and a third one's in security. So, it was like, there was never really a threat of getting Dex Dorut. And it was just a case of burning through as many uh, Doru Gorus as, as much as possible. Yeah. He didn't open super well either, in fairness to him, but like, I just, it, we, me and Harry kind of figured out that the best way to approach that matchup is to try and deck them out more than anything. Yeah. Um, and that was the regional run. We ended up, we ended up coming for 50, uh, 50 round 50. eight. That was round eight, yeah. Uh, which, I thought you said round seven. Round seven was uh, Mirage Galaxy. Oh, okay, no yeah. Um, I think so, anyway. It's, it's all a blur at this point. Uh, this isn't good for the video, so we'll just, we'll just, we'll just say it was the round eight. Um, if it needs editing in post, then sure. Um, so yeah, we ended up coming 33rd after that, and then we uh, decided to do <laughs> um, the 3v3. Uh, I actually did really badly in the 3v3, unfortunately. Uh, I think that's because I fought more niche decks than I expected. Uh, although round one was Ancient Garu, which I just I just lost because I found nothing. Uh, yeah, fair thing as well. The ABC we didn't get to decide, and also it was BAC based on who bought the tickets. Normally Tricks buys our 3v3 tickets, I bought them. We just completely fucked our order. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, I feel like it kind of worked out. Yeah, in the it worked end. out. Um, but I was sweating if you fought an Imperial player. Um, but unfortunately, you didn't. Yeah. Uh, so, but my round one was Agent Carry, which I lost against. But uh, you and Peter clutched up, which <laughs> thank you for that. Uh, round two was Commandramon. I just got dumped. I just got rushed out. I was like. There was like one instance where I needed to own his breath, but there was seven security, so I couldn't. I was just like, yeah, it's, I just got rushed down completely. There's nothing I could have done about it. Um, then it was. I can't remember. Was it Diaboro or was that? I think Diaboro was round four. It was Imperial round three. Because uh, I remember this guy talking to me about like seeing me on the Gallimon Discord. Um, which in hindsight, I probably should have asked for his Discord tags because I could have shouted them out. But, He'll, he'll watch this video and tag it for me, I, I'm a believer. Um, yeah, he was on Imperial, he didn't see any Daikens. Uh, I don't know if he also wasn't seeing Dragon modes, but um, yeah, eventually it got to a point where I was doing enough chip damage. It's, he wasn't seeing Fighter Mode Ace, I think, because I think he would have Fighter Mode Ace all of the chip damage I was doing, and then I ended up like putting him on Odin's Breath to then so I'll say like either have it or I just sort of like I sort of sweep the game. Um, yeah, really, it's just a case of if he doesn't find Daiken, Imperial is just such a different matchup overall. Yeah, unfortunately, didn't hit any other security. But yeah, that's like that's the important thing. I think um, Peter lost that round as well, so you needed to win. I did need to push up that one. Yeah, because uh, I think he played into Mirage, but for it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, round four was the upper one. I was like, 
kind of on track to win this. But again, this is where the X program would have come in clutch, just for, like wiping a board. Once he got his blocker set up, like, there's no real way for me to doubt that outside of Defex and like Wyverns threatening the, the, the Diablo Ramon. He also quartz me, which is like, I keep forgetting quartz and just go, I shouldn't forget because I've, I've done this before, just play quartz in a, uh, a deck that goes over a black level 6. Um, but yeah, quartz does go over a black level 6 and kind of uh, printed like 7 memory from, from it. I could, I was kind of fine because I had 7 security. But maybe in hindsight I shouldn't have wyverns the course, I should have wyverns the upper Roman and tried to find a different out to court, but it was one of those where it was either bank on security or um, play a slower game. I just banked on security, which didn't end up helping out. It is what it is. Uh, and then round five was against Eosmon. Um, more people should play Eosmon. Good deck. I think this guy just didn't find his level six early enough. He found one, but it died and then didn't find another one for a while. He also opened kind of slow. But like, the Manoas, I'll read pitch 1 to draw 2 and protect your heels from, is pretty, pretty ridiculous. Also the, the mem set to uh, Manoa, just like stopping your tanks from unsuspending. Good deck, more, more people should play it. Uh, I managed to win, fortunately. Um, we're gonna get, he opened like kind of slowly, yeah. and just, like, I wasn't able to establish enough redirects to stop me from doing chain damage. But um, yeah. It was a close one. I think if he had established the board earlier, he would have been in the board. I played the EOS matchup once before and struggled with it because they can also protect themselves with the Manoa Tamer. Uh, but yeah, uh, managed to clutch out unfortunately and that was the last round which was our base where we needed to win that to get top 4 and we, we, we came. 3 0. 3 0. Uh, yeah, that was, that's the list. I hope everybody who has been anticipating this has enjoyed this. This concept comes from a guy uh, in Japan. Japan. Um, well, the, the where I found the concept was on Discord. It's like a, a Discord user called Use Orange Juice Container, um, who is like a, 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 a JP player. He was the one who originally uh, introduced me to uh, Plessio Lock. Which, if you if you've never seen uh, Plessio Lock or if you've never seen me play Plessio Lock, the idea was that you would load Slayer Dramon EX3 on the the Plessio Mon EX3 and then go into Plessio X, force your opponent to attack, and pinch two memory from them. It's kind of like a taunt before it was a taunt. Um, like, like Ragnar before it was Ragnar or Dex before it was a Dex sort of thing. Um, but he came up with that concept initially, and then I don't think it was him who came up with this concept, but he's the one who sort of pushed it uh, in Japan. And then I've seen it and gone, hey, this actually looks kind of fun, let's, let's run it. And it's a lot of fun. Um, I hope if people watch this and enjoyed um, sort of like me explaining it, I hope the people I played against enjoyed watching me play it enough to not like uh, argue for the bullshit. Um, yeah, it's a great best of one deck if your opponent doesn't know what they're playing against. Although after this video, maybe people are more prepared for it now. Yeah, thanks, Tricks. No worries.